Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton. I'm glad to have you here with us on this December 29th, 2023. We are hitting the end of the year. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Bear with me a minute here. I got a snap a photo. Here we go. All right. Um, yeah, coming close. Not long now. We'll be done with 2022 and on to 2023. What will that bring? I don't know. I hope, I pray that things are better. But I know that regardless of all things, Christ reigns. Amen. That's the end of our devotion. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Good morning. Uh, my I had this yesterday, but my Luther mug. You guys, have, some of you guys have seen it before, but this is most certainly brew. I used to like old Lutheran.com, but then they began to emphasize some of the stuff of the of of one of the large Lutheran bodies who's not theologically sound. But I still like my coffee mug. So good morning, glad you're here. Um, I, I I don't see anybody here, so I got to re refresh my screen. We are. Um, doing our thing here as usual this morning there look there's a whole bunch of people there uh, you just weren't there when i was looking for you um warm in uh wisconsin today we're headed for the 40s is what i saw in the forecast uh, the, the 40s wow um uh, i'm not gonna say sunshine yet because it's kind of kind of overcast and gray and yet brighter than it has been when there's stuff other stuff coming although we're supposed to have rain today too which i don't know uh what that's really gonna gonna do to us in the end uh if we're actually going to get the rain they're threatening or not i saw i, I looked at the radar about 4 a.m you know because what are you doing at 4 a.m while i'm up looking at radar and uh uh it looked like um it definitely looked like there was rain in the area, but it was north of us. And so we'll just have to see. Just have to see. Let's see who's joining us on this uh, 29th of December on this Thursday morning. We got uh, Gail. Good morning. Um, you have to give us an update on Bill. I assume he's doing well, but um, do let us know that the carpal tunnel surgery he had went well. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Moosh Doc, good morning and good evening at the same time. Michael, good morning. Um, where'd Michael go? Here we go. Sun streaming through the window and pooling on the carpet. Yeah, well, you're in Florida, man in a boo. I've got a, a mechanic that I watch on YouTube a lot. He's down in Florida, and his video uh, that I was watching yesterday was working on a Nissan, working on the exhaust system on a Nissan. Uh, but he kept complaining it was cold, and I commented on his on his video and said, "You're not cold. You don't understand cold." Although I think he's from actually from up in this area because he has he and his family have vacationed up in Wisconsin. So, um, but you know, you guys got what to the 30s, 20, under just under 30. I mean, you you know, Mike, that's not cold. That's not cold. You know what Michigan cold is like. You don't know what Wisconsin cold is like, but Deb and Grant, good morning to you guys. Jill and John, good morning. Renee, hello. Sun shining and much warmer today. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Ashley, good morning. Uh, I'm glad all of you are, are with us today. I'm going to refresh one more time here. I got to find out why that's not updating in real time the way it should on its own yeah see there's bonnie and jean or, uh, bonnie and Jeannie, and Jeannie and bob there we go Jeannie and bob uh weren't there before and there's bonnie so uh i uh, love this week of rest yeah well yeah it is going quick it is going quick i've only done a third of the things i wanted to do and none of the things i really wanted to do so anyway enough enough let's uh get down to what we're doing here let me bring my treasury over here if you have the lutheran service book oh good morning to all of you and to all hiding in the background or who are watching later or what have you hi there i'm glad you're here 
spend a little time in God's word on this, well, on this blessed day on the 29th of December. So uh, let's go ahead. If you've got a Lutheran service book, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the morning order is found on page 295. That's the liturgy I like to use here each uh, morning that we gather. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You know, I wonder, I wonder if they shouldn't have switched those last two. It's Psalm 71, verse 8, and Psalm 51, verse 15. I wonder if they shouldn't have switched those two around. So, so first we would ask the Lord to open our lips and acknowledge that then our mouth will declare his praise. Then our mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. And then the glory be to the Father. I wonder if they should... Well, one can always second guess liturgy. And then we wind up writing our own, and then heresy occurs, and all kinds of weird stuff goes on. So let's just ignore what I said for the last five minutes. Our psalm today, Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. Psalm 78, 1 through 7. Oh, you know what we missed? I missed this. Before we before we go to the psalm, let's, you know. This is this is a significant day of the year for me, December 29th, the commemoration of David, uh, greatest of all Israel's kings, ruling from about 1010 to 970 BC. Remember the the uh, dates in in BC go backwards; they go they count, counting down to zero. Uh, so from 1010 to 970, I would say. I, 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 so his his rule was uh, about eighty years, which is actually a long time for a king to rule. Um, but I always I always like just you know you, you're looking for a, a thumbprint, a, a point to point to, and I always say the reign of King David is around one thousand, right? One thousand BC. That way you've got one is that's about a thousand BC, you know, and it, it, you, you're right in there. You're right in the area. Um, from King David to the return from the Babylonian captivity is about 500, or well, into the Babylonian captivity is about 500 years, and then 70 years in Babylonian captivity and back. So, um, and the return from the Babylonian captivity, uh, the next major event is the coming of uh, John the Baptist and the Christ. So then you're at uh, you're at about 4 450 BC, and then Christ is born about zero. So. Um, yeah, anyway, so uh, David ruling around the around 1000 BC for 80 years. The events of his life are found in 1 Samuel 16 through 1 Kings 2 uh, and in 1 Chronicles 10 through 29. David was also musically gifted. He was a skilled in playing the lyre and the author of no fewer than 73 psalms, including the beloved Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. His public and private character displayed a mixture of good, for example, his defeat of the giant Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, and evil, as in his adultery with Uriah's life, followed by the murder of Uriah in 2 Samuel 11. But David's greatness lay in his fierce loyalty to God as Israel's military and political leader, coupled with his willingness to acknowledge his sins and ask for God's forgiveness. See Psalm 51. It was under David's leadership that the people of Israel were united into a single nation with Jerusalem as its capital city. Um, David, hmm, simultaneously sinner and saint, doing good and doing evil, but always fiercely loyal, faithful uh, to the God of Israel, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our God, the God who is our God, even today. King David. All right, back to the psalm. Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. 
Give ear to my people. No, wait. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old. Things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children. Or we will not hide them from their children. But tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord. And his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed the, a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <laughs> I, I will open my mouth in a parable and I will utter dark sayings from of old. And then he goes on to talk about the the uh, um, the life of Israel and the, and the law. I don't know that they're dark. Hmm. Things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us and we will not hide them from their children but tell them to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might, the wonders that he has done. In our modern age, how do I want to say this? There's always a temptation to leave behind the Old Testament. Um, there is a sentiment about the Old Testament, <laughs> that rhyme, um, that it is all law. Um, and that, that that's when God was mean and harsh and cruel. And the New Testament is when God is loving and kind and gentle and accepting. And that's not true. Those of you who have been with me any time at all ought know that. There is just as much gospel. The gospel shows our Savior, shows God's mercy and grace as there is law in the Old Testament. The law shows our sins and our inability to do those things which are pleasing to God of our own nature. David is a prime example, right? It's God himself who said, this is a man after my own heart. And yet David, well, you know, I, the, the, the one we point to is always Bathsheba and Uriah, but there are plenty of other things that David did in the Old Testament, in, in, in his uh, life that were not pleasing to God. But when he did them and he realized what he had done, he sought God's forgiveness. And he lived in faith that God would forgive, that, that God passes over former sins for the promise of the coming Savior. And that's, that's what the whole Old Testament is, is to recognize that Israel is chosen by God. Not, not, it wasn't something they did. God said, you are my people and I will be your God. Um, God chose them. The creators of the heaven, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and all the things therein, chose them, and then sustained them, disciplined them when they wandered, but suffered their lawlessness and unfaithfulness too. I mean, think of it. They, he, he brought them up out of Egypt. Uh, well, first he brought them into Egypt to save them from the famines at the time of, of Jacob. But then 400 years later, he brings them out of Egypt to save them from the slavery that their life had uh, come to entail in the house of uh, house of Pharaoh. And and uh, uh, he brings them out, and, and all they can do the whole time is gripe, right? And yet he sustained them through 40 years of wandering in the wilderness um, to bring them to the promised land. He could have killed all of them. In fact, there's a few times where he said, Moses, get out of my way. I'm done. Um, and Moses pled with the Lord to forgive. Now, these mighty works of God that are in the Old Testament, we need to hang on to because they point us to the mighty works that Christ does in saving you and I from sin, death, and hell right here on the cross. All right, let's move on to our, let's move on to our, uh, Old Testament lesson today. 
Isaiah 55, 1 through 13, not very long. 12 or uh, well, be, be 14 verses because you got to count. Wait, no. One, two, three. No, it'll be 13 verses. It's when we get into the higher numbers that I get confused. Uh, yeah, so Isaiah 55, 1 through 13. Oh, and this is this is all written as poetry again. So pay a close attention to the imagery that we'll have to struggle through. Isaiah 55, 1. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money, without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know. And a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, make it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the horn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, about halfway through that, I lost my attention span. And I am not quite sure what uh, some of it was saying. I'm refreshing my screen here in case anyone else has popped in. I noticed the viewer count went up. And so, um, nope, last one's still by. Oh, you don't know it is there. Hi, Jerry. 40 degrees. Yeah, that's where we're headed to, 40 degrees. So let's start here early. Come, come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. With no money, come buy and eat. Buy wine and milk without money and without price. Well, wine is for a man's joy. And, and milk is the simple food that sustains life. Right? So he has no money. Come buy and eat. Buy the, buy the essentials. Receive the essentials without, without a price. Joy and in the essential food. Why spend your money for that which is not bread? You know, um, trying to remember what the Hebrew word for bread is. It's not lechayim. Where is it? But but for the Hebrews, remember bread is 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 life, right? That's that's the food. That sustains in the worst of all situations. If, if you're hungry, at least you have bread to eat. So why do you spend your money for things which are not the essential things to life, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? You know how how 
how much of our life, <laughs> oh, pastor, point it to yourself. How much of our life is often spent laboring for things that when we're done have brought us no pleasure and do not satisfy us? So listen with all diligence. Eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear to me. Ear, incline your ear, which means listen. Right? That's huh? Right? You when you hear a distant sound and you and you wanna you wanna clarify it for your ear, what do you do? Well you turn your you incline your ear to it. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My steadfast sure love for David. And that's that's pointing to the Christ, right? Who's who's Jesus? Well, he's the son of David. Right? Behold, I made him a witness for the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you. The Gentiles, right? Those those who are not part of Israel, right? Israel is the nation they know. You and I are the nation they did not know, the nation that Christ brings into the greater Israel. Because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, which is Christ, for he has glorified you. See, it's all pointing to Jesus. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Now, here we go. The wisdom of God, right? And, and this is this idea contained here and other places in Scripture. This is not a one-off verse. But this, this idea is essential to the way we ought be thinking in this day and age when things are in the world are so confused. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. If what we call justice were God's justice, we would be condemned. We would be without hope, right? Because whenever we are angered by what someone else has done, we seek justice according to our own hearts, uh, which is punitive. But God's justice is forgiveness. He seeks always to forgive. Now, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that the Christian has to be a pacifist pushover, because we stand on the Word of God firmly, and when we when we say something is wrong and demand God's justice for it, which would be repentance and forgiveness, we do so because we know God is, speaks true. Your thoughts are not my thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, which is thanks be to God, because if his ways were our ways, this, the cross of Christ, the crucifixion, the birth crucifixion, death and resurrection of God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, would never have come to pass. Which of, which of you fathers would put your son out there as a sacrifice, even if it was a sacrifice for the whole world? No, absolutely not. I mean, I might take him out on my own, my justice. But God's justice is forgiveness. God's justice is a call to Israel in uh, the time that Isaiah is speaking of the coming of the Babylonian captivity. It is a call for repentance. If they would but turn away from their idolatrous worship, their lawlessness, their unfaithfulness, and turn back to the Lord their God and worship him and him alone and call upon him faithfully, Babylonian captivity would have never taken place. Israel would have never been crushed. Jerusalem would still be the capital, be the capital of the world. But we are poor, miserable creatures, and the Lord disciplines those who love him. 
So even as they're sent, there's a remnant that remains, and that remnant comes back to rebuild Jerusalem. And eventually, around the turn of the millennium, the turn of the, the calendar clock, year zero to five, Christ is born. Christ is born to die to save you from your sin. And then, even as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and return not there but water the earth, making it to grow and, and sprout, so shall his words go out of his mouth, not returning empty, but strengthening you and calling you. It shall accomplish that which he purposes and shall succeed in the thing for which it was sent, which is to call you out of sin and darkness into his marvelous light. Then for you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. Instead of the thorn, a cypress, instead of a briar, the myrtle, and, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that will not be cut off. The blood, blood of Christ shed for you. Remember, friends, the antithesis, the opposite of bad or evil, is not good. It's faithfulness to the Lord, and it's repentance, and it's his forgiveness. The the balm which heals our wound and makes us whole in him, Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's go on from there. Our prayer of the day. Let us pray. God of majesty, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, we give you thanks for David, who through the Psalter gave your people hymns to sing with joy in our worship on earth, so that we may glimpse your beauty, bring us to the fulfillment of the hope of perfection that will be ours as we stand before your unveiled glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we'll continue with the Apostles' Creed this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray, as our Lord taught us, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning, God of abundance, on Thursday it feels like the week is coming to a close. Full of all colors and shadows, just as you have filled the skies and seas with creatures so that they have life and color, movement and purpose. Lord, fill this day with people and feelings that will make my life something special. Guide my efforts and actions today so they may be meaningful, necessary, and useful for the growth of others. May my work and activities be in harmony with the creation that surrounds me, with my loved ones and friends. During my coming home, help me to keep the commitments of this day without feeling burdened by routine. Help me to enjoy them as part of your creation. May this day be full of life and abundance, and may I seek your presence and your spirit in moments of exhaustion. Thank you for this Thursday, God of all fullness. This in Christ's name. Amen. Our God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts that you give to us each day. We ask for those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, whether it be the effects of age or illness, 
that you would grant them strength and comfort in their times of needs, and that you would hear their prayer when they call upon you, reminding them always of the assurance they have in your Son, our Lord. We pray especially this day for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, D Dan, Ezra, Neely, and all who call upon your most holy name. Give them strength, O Lord, for the sake of your Son, who is our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotions to a close on this Thursday morning. Um, I'm just going to refresh one more time here in case somebody popped in at the last minute, because this is just not refreshing the way it ought. And no, Bonnie's the last one there. So God's peace be with you on this Thursday. We'll see you back here tomorrow, December 30th, Friday, um, for our closing or for our, our daily devotion. God's peace be with you.